Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Silent Hill Origins. The fifth game in the Silent Hill franchise, and a prequel to the first game, otherwise known as Silent Hill Zero in Japan. Why they didn't keep that name over here? Not a clue. Tonight we are doing UFO ending, which means no defeating God, I'm afraid. We are skipping that. And with me is the lovely Char Bunny. If you would like I'm to. I'm here see. too. <laughs> yes. I'm excited. Hooray. So, in order to get into UFO mode, we have to go into load game, not new game. Very different than Silent Hill 3. And in 3, 2, 1, we shall begin. So one of the things about this game, too, is that this is the PSP version. The reason we are playing the PSP version, it is because it is the most optimal version for speedrunning purposes, as the PS2 version has a bunch of weird IGT timer things, because like all Silent Hill games, we time it by the in-game timer. I have also switched into the Sprinter outfit because it gives Travis infinite stamina because he has very low stamina in New Game and requires a bunch of energy drinks. Not very good for the heart and also for needing to speed up. Of course, we are currently running into Silent Hill itself. He's just left his truck standing there in the middle of the road. And for anyone that is playing this game for the first time, one thing that you will notice, if you don't speak, of course, is that you hear Alyssa saying Travis's name repeatedly as he's walking towards the town. And oh no, we're in a building that's on fire. Fantastic, right? Yes. So that's always where I want to spend my Thursday nights, inside a burning building. Let's go. <laughs> exactly, right? Of course, Silent Hill Origins takes place seven years before the events of Silent Hill 1, as we see Alyssa's corpse burning. In the cutscene, she says, let me burn, and Travis is like, nah, I'm not with that fam, and picks her up, which is probably not the best thing ever. As I run into some fire by accident, let's go. And Travis continues to fall, and we are now entering what I like to call the Majora's Mask section of the game, because we have super spooky supernatural powers mixed with kind of crazy spooky music, kind of like Majora's Mask. Isn't that rather enjoyable? Meanwhile, Travis is kind of doing fine somehow. And, you know, all this smoke, standing, carrying a burnt child. You know, he's got some strength behind him. And hey, fun fact, if you get out of this building fast enough, you get an achievement for it and you get a firefighter outfit, right? Yes. <laughs> so maybe that was him in a past life. Maybe. Although I believe that's also if you only do it on New Game. I don't know about that, mm. but it is a thing. If you get out of there fast enough, you do get a firefighter outfit. So it's like, <laughs> huzzah. And, that, and now we are heading into the hospital. This is the hospital from Silent Hill 1 and also shows up in Silent Hill um, Homecoming. It is not the same hospital from Silent Hill 2 and 3 as we are running through. Very empty, by the way. You wouldn't think that it is empty, but it is. And we get this nice musical tone that gets cut off after the cutscene. How unfortunate. As we take the only elevator ride. This is also the second to last game that Akira Yamaoka works on. He, of course, was the sound designer and composer for the Silent Hill series. Uh, for most of it, minus, um, Downpour, I believe, was his last- he didn't do that one. And I don't remember if he did Shattered Memories, which is a the remake of the first Silent Hill. So we head into 205, we immediately turn around, and, hey, look, Alyssa's here. Isn't that cool? And, of course, I love that cutscene because you see how he's in his trucker outfit, and then immediately the cutscene switches to his regular outfit, despite the fact that he's... er, to this outfit, despite the fact that he's wearing this outfit the whole time. Why am I trying to go through wrong doors? Don't you know. So! We just went through a mirror into the other world, I believe? Yep. 
that's this game's gimmick on how to get to what I call Hell World, um, because obviously it looks like something straight out of hell. So they spilled a lot of red paint everywhere, is what I've noticed. Need to work on their interior decorating skills. Yes, definitely so. Now, one of the things that makes this run so comfy is that unlike other Silent Hills, there are no RNG puzzles. It is always the same puzzle every time. So for this one, it's three one two three one nine to get ourselves the heart. Now it says it's a plastic heart. However, why would you put an, a, a plastic heart in an ice box? Methinks it is not quite what it seems. As we head downstairs to the next area. This begs the question, where do you keep your plastic hearts then? Um, that's a good question that I don't have an answer for because I have no plastic hearts. That's also fair. <laughs> are you planning on getting any? And if so, are you planning on acquiring an icebox at the same time? Probably not. And as you saw, we got another plastic organ from the top of a toilet. Why, there's one. I went through the door and I shouldn't have done that. I needed to use the mirror. Because we go back and forth between the other world and this world a lot, and for some reason we have a key on a toilet. Why was there a plastic heart in a hell toilet, and why was there a key on top of a normal toilet? These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. And also, I hope you're all ready to get some toast, because we're about to pick up a toaster. We have picked up the toaster to pick up the key. Yes, we got toast. Best yes. run ever. Exactly. Also, um, this game's camera is uh, 2D controls for anyone that's played uh, other Silent Hills. There is no tank control option, so the camera is very much against you. So that is something to bear in mind as we pick up two more organs uh, uh, from those sinks. For some reason, the intestines look like a brain to me when they're inside the sink, and then of course they become intestines. Now, one thing about putting these uh, pieces in order is that you cannot put the heart or the lungs down first because then the heart won't fit. You cannot put the intestines in after the other two organs because then the intestines don't fit. It's a very, very particular order, and it's like something to mem or memorize. Also, the song you were just hearing will play a lot throughout the run. It is kind of the most consistent song as there's nurses everywhere that want to kill us. Now we equip the Tesla rifle. I don't know why I exited the menu, but that's okay. And we put the eyes into the statue, and now we are about to face the first boss. One th fun thing about all the bosses is they all become regular enemies, so we will see plenty of this boss later on. Now, one of the reasons we're shooting it is because it has the ability to QTE you. We don't like QTEs. Thanks, God of War, and thanks, Resident Evil 4, for that. You were the worst things because of that. Um, after all, this game is a mid-2000s game, which means QTEs for days. Always lovely. So now we can exit the hospital, and in that cutscene that I skipped there, we would have met Lisa from Silent Hill 1, who is apparently a teenager. Now, I don't know about you, but last time I checked, teenagers cannot become nurses. Even in the 70s, I don't think that was a thing. I don't think. So, yeah. I'm still stuck on how for the boss, you gave a reason for shooting the boss that wasn't just, oh my god, what is that? Let me destroy it with anything I can. <laughs> but I'm glad you have a better plan and a better head on your shoulders than I do. I mean, to be fair, they're just straight jackets. And they like to puke on you if, you're, if they're coming at you from range. So, don't you so, know? Like a problem, but you know. Glad we have a gun. That's all I'm going to say for this game right now. Yes. So, one of the things that we won't be seeing in this run is me picking up thousands of TVs and thousands of katanas as we have a uh, Tesla rifle with infinite ammo and we also have the moon gauntlets, which we will use instead. Are these things that you just naturally have from playing the game or did you have to unlock them a certain way? Um, I am not 100% sure how you unlock them exactly because I just stole a save. 
Uh, <laughs> to put it bluntly. The important thing uh, is that we have this. <laughs> yes, we are Got good. It. Um, now one thing as well, if you have the extra effects on, which is, you would have a grainy filter over this, uh, in the extra effects being on, uh, there would also be red flashes every time you got close to an enemy outdoors, so it would be advisable to go into the menu and, and turn those off. Unfortunately, if you are doing a new game run, you don't have access to that unfortunately so it's kind of uh so something to be aware of if you are a runner and have um epilepsy or anything that can kind of mess you up uh when it comes to flashing lights um so just a fair warning there of course we don't see it here because i have that effect off because I also want the game to look good. As we are just running to the sanatorium now. Um, as we were running past all kinds of nasty things. And now we are here in the sanatorium. A very big place with lots of doors, lots of hallways. Very easy to get lost. As we enter here into the East Sanatorium. Also, one fun thing is the camera really wants you to focus on the map on the table, so you kind of have to be very aware and be like, no, please don't. And in this cutscene that I just skipped, um, we actually meet Alessa's mother. Um, oh god, what is her name? Um, oh god. Um, name escapes me, I'm sorry. I know their last name is Gillespie, so we'll just call her Mrs. Gillespie. Who is Dahlia? Yes, Dahlia, thank you. Which, fun fact about Dahlia's name, she is named after famous Italian horror director Dario Argento's wife. There is a lot of Dario Argento references throughout horror games, especially Japanese horror games, for example, the one I just mentioned, and also the game Clock Tower. Uh, Clock Tower 1, I realize that this is not Clock Tower, was inspired from his 1985 film, uh, Phenomena. So, a little bit of movie trivia there for you. I'm learning things today, this is great. Yes. In the spirit of learning things, is does it matter if you play on English or Japanese or other versions of this game? It does not, however... Um, one thing that should be noted is that, um, in the Japanese version, I do believe that a lot of yes or no options are automatically set to no, um, whereas English, they are set to yes. And also, if you're playing on the Japanese version, um, circle is your yes button and your action button, so opening doors and whatnot. Please don't hit me, Mr. Dog. Um, and X is to back out of things, whereas English X is yes, circle is no. That's not confusing whatsoever. Indeed. As a matter of fact, the Nintendo Switch actually uses Japanese controls on every game. That's why the A button is where it is and the B button is where it is, because Nintendo just said, the world must experience Japanese controls. <laughs> and now we have... And now we are off to hydrotherapy, because we have appointments to keep, and it is only polite to arrive there. Of course, we have some nurses here. Fun fact, enemies will also just randomly disappear once you've done something, like those nurses won't be there when we leave. So isn't that fun as we flush down the key? As we head to ICU number four to activate our mirror powers once again. And I like how when you activate this one, you're at the side of the sink, but then magically you're in front of it once that finishes. Yes, I was, and it's just like, aha. I don't think the devs intended you to be able to activate that from the side, but it is just a thing that we can do. And now we are going to hear about Devil Sons as we head to the first floor. Ah, I always hated you. You and your devil son. 
Supposedly, that is Travis's mother saying that, by the way. Because reasons. And also, remember, chat, to always flush public bathrooms, because as you can see, this thing is quite disgusting. So we do the good Samaritan thing of flushing the toilet. Of course, there is a purpose behind that. Remember that key that I flushed down in the hydrotherapy room? That allows us to go grab it. Now we're heading into the dormitory here, and I don't know if doors actually matter, but I like to go through the second one because the key is right there, and then we need to head in this direction anyway, so go through the first door, the second. Um, so, huzzah. And then we go through, and of course we have invisible people, and I keep forgetting to do something very important that I just learned about an hour and a half ago, which is turn off the flashlight and enemies will leave you alone. Because they can't see you, apparently, when you don't have the flashlight on. And one important thing to note about that hall is you want to run away from the noise. You do not go towards the noise. Run away. That's how you know sort of thing. One of the things about the sanatorium, as it's very big and can be confusing, there's that camera that I mentioned that wants you to really look at that map, um, is that you, um, as I go the wrong way, hooray, um, is that a lot of the times you just want to go straight. You want to take straight lines through doors, and that's where you want to go. Um, this purpose is to just get a shotgun, which we won't be using, um, but it is a mandatory pickup because you can't leave the room without it. And of course, we have a room with two dogs where one of them will hopefully not hit me. Thank you. Don't hit me, please. Yay. I call them dogs because there aren't any traditional dogs here, and so I'm like, well, they crawl along the ground, so they must be dogs, right? And one thing about the dogs is you really want their butt to be in your face. Because when their butt is in your face, they can't hit you. So very, very important. Alright, and here we go to get that key which has fallen all the way down to the basement in a very, very, very gross room. Um, which we will see in just a moment. I mean, it's understandable that it's in a gross room. I think we literally flushed a toilet to get it here, so... <laughs> was not expecting, like, a Victorian garden or anything. Fair enough. Very, very true. So here we go. Exiting. and dodge and of course uh when it comes to versions of the game just to go back to that for a second um the japanese version is also much cheaper than the american version you can often find bundles of silent hill origins and silent hill um shattered memories in a bundle for under a hundred canadian dollars um, whereas the, at least for the PS2 version, I've never seen the PSP version for sale, uh, anywhere. Uh, it's $170 for the PS2 version, so it's like, ugh, um, it's quite pricey. So I can only imagine what the, um, PSP version must, m must cost. Uh, these days, as I believe that version is even rarer than the PS2 one. So now we have the archive room key, where we will hear more dialogue, which is, I had to do it. You had to. Please help me understand. As we continue on. Are these cutscenes, like, story stuff, or what's going on with this, like, spooky voices showing up? Um, I'm pretty sure it's Travis's repressed memories coming through, um, given that that's his mother, I do believe, but oh. I am not 100% sure. Like, the I've always hated you, you and your devil son, I believe that's his mother speaking, and that was his mother. I kind of thought they were uh, Dahlia. But that doesn't seem to be the case, because we don't fight Dahlia in this game. Oh, wait. So here's a dog that's a pain 
but because we have the flashlight off, it's like, hooray. Very good. Alright. As we continue on here. Let's see. The enemies in this game are super aggressive until you turn the flashlight off. And then they have no idea that you existed. It's fantastic. Yes, it is. And here we have the reason. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay. Now I under. Okay. So, one of the things about um, this game is that um, depending how you're playing it, things freak out. I will say that right now as we're coming up to everybody's favorite puzzle. Why is it everybody's favorite puzzle? Because who doesn't love super creepy dolls? Everyone's favorite horror trope. Raise your hand if you just found your next nightmare. <laughs> gonna see this in my dreams tonight. Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay, I'll put an extra couple stuffed animals in bed to keep me cozy. <laughs> and that's also a set puzzle, right? There's no RNG, so you know yeah. the solution every time? Yep. Awesome. It's always uh, green on the first one, uh, yellow on the last one, blue, blue, red. Oh god. See, and sometimes you get stuck on poles because of what you see happening. It's not a very good time. Oh, right, I have the flashlight on. We don't need the flashlight anymore. Game can't freak out and hurt us anymore. I feel like when you were a kid and you, you try to play hide and seek, and you have the idea that if I can't see them, they can't see me, and you just, like, bury your head under something? And you're, you're very not, not hidden, but you feel like you are. I think that's how this game operates. Yes. Also, I don't know why Travis always wants to touch his face as he te as he teleports to each realm. He back does and do that. He's oh just like, goodness. I'm gonna try to touch my face. Why? Why is like that he's a thing? Not sure if he's real. <laughs> I, I I suppose. At this point, though, it's like dude, you've done this enough times to know this is how it works. Yes. We're almost done with the sanatorium. Um, the end of the sanatorium, we are actually over halfway through the run at that point. Um, the sanatorium is probably the longest section of the game, as the theater, which is coming up, is short. Also, fun fact, opening that door um, while he's trying to stand uh, skips his standing animation which makes things a little faster. Now, one of the cool things about this, you notice how there is music playing right now. Well, the music stops playing if you start going in the wrong direction. So something that can help you, because again, very big place, easy to get lost, so on and so forth, because it's like, you can go up the stairs again, but that's not where you want to go. You want to head towards the female dormitories. And you mentioned this earlier, but sometimes actions can despawn enemies, and I believe picking up that key also just despawns everything here. And that's why the hallways are so clear on our way back. Yes. Um, one fun fact about New Game, there was a health drink that I didn't pick up. It was very early on uh, where you see the first cop car. Um, if you grab that, it changes spawns. So you get a bunch of energy drinks rather than health drinks to spawn. Um, but whereas we have uh, the tracksuit, we don't need the energy drinks. But just a fun little thing to point out um, between uh, difficulties. So now that we are... For, oh, for anyone joining in late, the reason we don't need those is because our awesome outfit is giving us infinite stamina. Yes. And we use this opportunity to put on the moon gauntlets, or as I call them, the boxing gloves. And... Here we go, Travis's mother defeated in the one-two punch. Again, unlike Silent Hill 3, there isn't a lot of opportunity to hydrate because there's no section where you sit there for two minutes, aka the Borley's Haunted Mansion in Silent Hill 3. Um, you kind of have to be quick uh, with boss deaths, 
Although the final boss fight of this run has possibly the longest death in the game, so there is a pretty good chance to uh, hydrate as we grab the lumberyard key in the back of that car. Why Travis doesn't take the car, I have no idea. You think he would want to take the car because he's trying to speed his way through. That would be stealing. We definitely haven't taken anything else that's not ours throughout the course of this run. Wink, wink. Really, we're just trying to be good. Follow the rules. Now, one of the things here is this camera really likes to change back and forth, so it kind of takes a little bit. And it kind of makes it an extra spooky thing because that kind of makes the dog angry and can possibly make him go, I'm going to hit you now. And it's like, oh, no. So you kind of got to be careful with that as well. Of course, where we're out in the fog, once again, he's not using the flashlight, so it's like, huzzah. Again, you want to stay far away from the dogs, because if you get too close to the dogs, it's like, oh no. This is bad. Like, charge and do this headbutt thing. It's not fun, no one wants that. Yes. <laughs> gonna, plenty of space. And I believe it does quite a bit of damage. So it's like, oh no. But don't worry, folks. There's something much worse waiting for us at the theater. Dun, 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 dun. Well, that's not heckin' ominous whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not nervous. It's fine. I got this. Yes, you can do it. I've got my emotional support bunny at hand. We're good to go. Yes. And there's that nurse that was inside there. Um, she was mutilated by a boss that we would fight in New Game, but nowhere to be seen here. Um, we see him briefly in a cutscene when we first enter there, but we never see him again. Again, gotta stay away from the dogs. Unless, of course, their butt is in our face, in which case it is fine. Perfectly fine. Now, here's a question for y'all. Will the straight jacket show up in front of the lumberyard? Yes, he will. Sometimes he can show up, sometimes he won't. There is also a dog um, after the movie theater that's sitting inside of a uh, alleyway that may or may not spawn as well. And of course, we hear these ominous sounds inside the lumberyard, but guess what? There's nothing here. It's completely empty. We're safe for now. <laughs> Somehow that makes it scarier. <laughs> I don't trust this at all. <laughs> all right. And now we are heading past 186 or no, 182 Silent Hill something something something. Now, of course, when it comes to knowing which direction you're going to because it's like, well, where do I go here? Well, they gave you a nice pool of blood splattered all over the street to follow. And that's how you know you're going the right way. And... Woo! We debated the dog! Nice dodge. <laughs> and now we... Well, this wallpaper's a choice. <laughs> yes, as there's a giant hole in the bathroom. And we head down. And down we go. Dun dun dun. And now we head into the theater, which is currently locked, but somehow placing a ticket over here unlocks the door. Don't know how that works, but it does. So. I mean, we can also jump through mirrors to get to alternate dimensions. So at this point, sure, that makes sense. Let's roll with it. I suppose that does make sense. So we head into the auditorium. And then... Cutscene plays. We meet up with Lisa again, who does act any things and then leaves. And we never see her again. Until Silent oh. Hill 1. <laughs> until the next game. Fun note about the flashlight, by the way, uh, we try to keep it off, but most cutscenes actually force it back on. So like in many of the cutscenes that you see, the flashlight will just be on again at the end of it because the game's like, you clearly need this. Yes. 
And of course, we now still start hearing play lines throughout the theater, like the hence, hang not on my garment. I do not know what that is a reference to or anything, um, as we just passed one of the portable TVs, but we need a stone tablet instead, so we are going to go get that stone tablet, because stone tablet, or sun totem tablet thing, thing that we need. Oh, and by the way, remember that thing that I said is much, much worse? We just ran into it. That's right. There's living marionettes all over the place now. Isn't that enjoyable? Who doesn't love a spooky puppet? Am I right? Also, oh. very nice. We got that without talking to the paper. That is still very difficult. There they are. See? Spooky marionettes that go, eh, eh. As this they is not good, just for the record. From my perspective here, that's considered bad. Just want to throw that out there. Yes, it is very bad. And skip that. And climb on up. Also, it should be noted that this was the first Silent Hill game uh, not developed by Team Silent. It was developed by a team in the UK who would also do uh, Silent Hill Shattered Memories. They did not do Silent Hill um, Homecoming. That was done by Double Helix of Killer Instinct 3 fame. Killer Instinct 3 being Killer Instinct on the Xbox One for anyone that's like, Killer Instinct 3, what the hell is that? By the way, we just left the room and came back into it. Did you forget something or what happened there? Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what happens there, but I'm pretty sure that's a glitch. Because notice how we only had one tablet. Um, and we put it into the door, and it, so when you leave and come back in, the door unlocks. I do not know if there is a second tablet, be oh, because I have is. never- Oh, Oh. You're supposed to get a sun tablet and a moon tablet in order to get past that door, and the door's only supposed to open when you have both of them. But somehow this game has had a glitch that's been known about for an incredibly long time, where if you just put the sun tablet in and then leave and come back, the door is like, yeah, that's good enough, and you just go through. Yes. It saves like 10 to 15 minutes. There you go. I knew that it was some sort of glitch, but I didn't know exactly. What am I doing? I gotta go through a different door. Why did I run? To be fair, the game doesn't know what it is either, so we're on even footing. Fair enough. We needed this door, not the other door. I've done that like five, 20 times. It's no big deal. All right. So now we're heading back down because we need to grab some lights to uh, awaken a demon. Because what horror game is complete without awakening demons, am I right? Charbunny um, falls <laughs> silent <laughs> over this question. I'm watching you move through the hallways and I got distracted. Yes, all good horror games have demon spawns. I think that's very much true. I'm still not agreeing with you on the mannequins, though. Those can go die in a fire. I think we just picked something up, though. Do you want to talk about why we went into that room? Yes, um, I picked up the health just in case I needed backup strats, of course. And we picked up those lights for a puzzle that we are about to do to awaken the demon. The order of this is the 500 watt, followed by the 120 watt, followed by the 750 watt, followed by the 250 watt. So here comes the seven or the seven, the 500, the 125. Rumor, rumor is when you actually play this game and not speedrun it, you have to do math to solve this puzzle, making it probably the scariest part of this game. What? There's nothing wrong with math. Why do people? Math is pretty cool. Sometimes you get it wrong, and then it's just wrong, and then you have wrong math in front of you, and what do you do with wrong math? You need right math. Wrong math isn't very helpful. True. So. Ex no, what? Did I? Oh, that's what I did wrong. So now you know what happens when you do that wrong. I've never done that wrong before. So I'm, so now we know, and knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe, a real American hero. G.I. Joe is always there. There's a G.I. Joe movie from my childhood that was basically just a toy ad, and I rewatched it the other day, and the voice acting holds up and nothing else does. It's so great. Both Transformers and G.I. Joe had movies. I love the Transformers <laughs> movie. It's fantastic. It was Orson Welles' last film. Oh. Yes. That's cool. And it also features Leonard Nimoy, 
as Galvatron. <laughs> That's so epic! Dang! I feel like I missed out. I don't think I ever saw that one. Also, you'll notice the enemies are more aggressive. Again, we got the flashlight on, but we have so many overpowered weapons that it's really not a big deal if we get hit here. No. It's not. I also forgot about the flashlight thing. I didn't even realize it was on. Those things kick a lot. There is actually a fun glitch coming up shortly. Although it's not really a glitch, I just think it's taking advantage of um, certain things. And I will point it out when we get to it. Um, it is coming up very shortly. Also, the mannequins are off their strings. They're now walking on their hands. Isn't that just lovely? Again, this the answer there is no. I'm pretty confident in my answer on this one. Also, we did dodge that uh, second mannequin in that hallway, which is not usually the case when I do runs. I usually get whacked by that one. Alright, now we have a puzzle coming up here. We need to continue to awaken the demon, so we need to get a key so that we can fully give it its food. As it were, because of course, when you wake up, you're hungry and you kind of don't function until you eat. So it's like, I need food. Give me food or I'm not waking up. So we go here. Sympathize with that. <laughs> Absolutely. And grab a key from the tree. And then Travis starts saying something about be not afeard. I didn't know afeard was a word until I played this game. And it's like, okay. So that makes me think this is some sort of Shakespearean reference, because who else would use a feared, right? Yeah, I don't know what it's from either, but Shakespeare just seems like a really solid guess. All right. And we get hanging ones once again. Isn't that lovely? Please don't... Yay, we dodged that one too. That is also a very rare uh, thing that happens. Um, and of course we dodge all these ones. Now remember the thing that I said? So check this out. Although he didn't hit me the first time. So a lot of the times what happens is he kicks right as I'm grabbing the lever. And even though it looks like it hits, it doesn't hit. Because I think we get some iframes when we grab stuff. But I could be wrong. Also check out the dog. Ow, dogs hurt. Also flashlight turned on for some reason. Why did the flashlight turn on? I don't know. It's those cutscenes. All right. So now we have the lever. And of course, what do we do with levers? We tell Kronk to pull the lever. And then he pulls the wrong lever and we fall to our doom. And that's it, everyone. Thanks for watching. We're all dead now. Of course, there's always okay. a cutscene. Yeah, we're not actually we're dead. Supposed... dead. I just wanted to throw in a Disney reference for no reason. I always throw in Disney references for no reason. So now the beast has awakened. And he is a big, angry boy. And he can kill you in one hit depending how low your health is. But if you move to the side, you're generally safe. And there he is a dying. Heard of One Punch Man, but this is Two Punch Man. Two punches, boss is down, and we're out of here. Exactly. And of course, Travis always wakes up on something comfy. And of course, there's a dead mannequin, puppet, marionette, whichever you prefer. We grab a key from him. Isn't that nice? Just a key. And that was also the final boss of the run, by the way. There are no more bosses. More dogs on the street, though. You'd think they would hire some dog catchers. To, to catch these boys and girls and just not happening and by the way it gets worse because guess what y'all it's also giant dog time that's right we got giant dogs here yeah it seems like a little bit of a problem if I had to say uh, in not good indeed So where are we off to now? We, we got out of that the theater, which is good, because now the mannequins are gone. Where are we heading next? Next, we are heading to a bookstore that has seen some... And there's a sale! Yes! They're all on sale! So... Are you going to buy a book? No, we're going to steal a key. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly different, but okay. So we now have 
the bookstore key, which allows us to go through here, and it's technically the back door, if you will. And now we're going to head to a balcony, because we need another key. This key is very important. Without this key, we kind of doom the run. So, we pick up the key. It's the 502 key. Has a moon on it. I wonder what that could mean. Also, we got dogs, more straight jacketers, and the like. Of course, we want to head towards the dog. That's another thing that you'll be able to figure out, because you can go the other way, but it's a dead end. Um, so... The one time you want to head towards dogs, of course you don't want to get too close because they will try to uh, hit you really, really hard. And now we get to the general store, which is going out of business. So sad. Tragic, really. Yes. And of course we get fun camera angles, as is the way. Um, very similar to what I said during my Silent Hill 3 run, for anybody that caught that during last. It's very similar to, uh, Heather going across the bridges. You don't want to adjust your movement. Adjusting your movement, very bad thing to do until the camera kind of, like, is behind Travis or such. And then you can kind of adjust your movement. Now, will the dog be in the alleyway? Yes, he will. So we must jibate it into attacking so that we can get past it unscathed and of course there's our big boy boss that we just beat that becomes a regular enemy there are quite a few in the area but we're only going to run into two of them and he didn't try to attack he has a bit of a wind up it's always avoidable uh which is nice as well but it's very very scary nonetheless because it's just like wham and you get hit and it's possible game over man because game over, man! It's game over! And now we're going into this building, which is another store. There's Travis and his father. Um, not sure exactly how that cutscene plays out as we head over here. And we have these two. These two are kind of a bit of a pain to dodge. Uh, they can puke on you. Which is the ideal thing, because even if they hit you, it's still faster than the QTE. Um, we passed that one pretty easily, which was nice. Excellent, we passed both of them. Another rare feat. As I mentioned um, to Char Bunny a uh, couple of days ago, this run is not as seasoned as my Silent Hill 3 runs, so it is still very much a work in progress. Um, so that is very much a thing. And now we are back in the hell world, in the hell streets, as we are almost done with the run. We just have to go through the hell apartments, avoiding dogs all along the way. We will also see a new enemy type enter the ring. Turn off the- actually I need the flashlight on for this one specifically because I need him to be debated. Come on! Come on, you can do it. Good boy! There we go. And here is that new enemy. Doesn't he look lovely? And we head... No! And we head through this door. <laughs> Activate. They're so lovely and they're not. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop. It's okay. And... We are now back in regular world. And what's this? A door with a moon. And that is time, by the way. As we have obtained... The UFO ending, as he tries to use the key to open the door. Huh? But it doesn't work. It doesn't fit. And the lonely, moon, the lonely moon, you never let me down. You've always been there or you've me. always been there. Okay, I'm not as familiar with this. But wait, aliens! Sacre bleu! What? And also, a doggo. So technically... This counts as dog and UFO ending because you get both. You see my truck? I have to find my truck. He has to find the it. The first thing he asks is about his truck. Your he just saw an alien and a dog in a space helmet come out of the moon. Come with us. Yeah, well now he's about to ask if he can drive the UFO and they ask, "Do you drive stick?" Ta-da. What the heck is that cutscene? I hadn't actually watched it yet. <laughs> All right, not bad. A 32, 21. 
about Yay, uh, 23 seconds off my PB, of course. Very nice. Yes, and as you can see, it gives you how long the flashlight was on for, how much your total game time was for, how far you walked, enemies killed, what they were killed with. Even though we're using gauntlets, they count as melee weapons and not fists. Je ne sais pas. <laughs> but yes, and that was the run. I have been Abby. You can follow me on the Twitters at Abby underscore Brander. You can follow me on Instagram at Every Villain is Lemons. Yes, that is a SpongeBob reference, although there are two S's on the end because somebody took Every Villain is Lemons with one S on the end. You can also follow me at twitch.tv slash Abby's Corner. We will be learning Mario Party speedruns very soon. So that is a thing. And Char Bunny, would you like to plug anything? <laughs> thank you, Social. First, I want to say thank you for this fantastic run. This is an excellent way to kick off a month of spooky games. For everyone watching, if you enjoyed this, Attract Mode is running all month long, Thursdays and Saturdays, with this spooky version of Attract Mode that's so much fun to watch. It's going to be Sundays at 2 p.m. and Thursdays at 9 p.m. Both of those times are in Eastern. And if you're thinking, well, gosh, this looks like fun and I know a spooky game. Well, the good news is submissions are still open and there are a few spots available. So if you want to get in on that, make sure to send your submissions in soon. You can find that submission form at ladyarcaders.com. And if you'd like to hang out with us, then you can keep up with Lady Arcaders by joining our public Discord to get updates on upcoming events. Type exclamation mark Discord in chat for a link. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. And please stick around. We are going to be raiding Marforia, who is playing Resident Evil, that sort of twin to Silent Hill as a franchise. So if you're still wanting more horror spooky action, don't go anywhere. Thank you again for watching and joining us as we got to see Abby run this fantastic game. Good night, everyone, and stay safe out there, all right? Good night, and submit or I'll haunt you from the grave. <laughs>